to Agape Kids Church. You are tuned into the At Kids Total Kids Worship Service. This service is for our students ages 6 to 12 years old. Our lesson for today is titled Think Before You Speak and will be led by ministers Kim and Kyle. All my Agape Kids, get ready, get set, and let's go learn how to love like Him. Good morning, I'm Minister Kyle. And I'm Minister Kim. And we want to welcome you guys to our At Kids Total Worship Service this morning. We're very excited to see you guys here this morning. Good morning. If we could get everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes, we're going to begin with our opening prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to come to you this morning, on this beautiful day, saying thank you, God, for giving us an opportunity to be here in your presence. We ask that you reach out, God, to each of the children tuning into your service today to hear from you. They want to hear from you, they want to learn from you, and they want to know about you, God. And we know that you'll send your Holy Spirit down to reach them, to touch them, so they can know your presence and to feel your love on the inside. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you guys had a chance to listen to our praise and worship songs today. They're both about how the words impact lives. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to them, then pause us right now and go back and listen to those songs. Because that will really get you motivated and focused on what our message will be for you today. Speaking of focus, if you didn't check out last week's message from Minister Trinia, you should go back and do that. I learned so much from her about wholesome versus unwholesome words. And of course, we should be using wholesome words as much as possible because they bring a lot of positivity, encouragement, compliments. It's just incredible. And she gave us so many examples. A lot of them came from Proverbs about how God wants us speaking wholesome words. So if you didn't check that out, make sure you do that. And make sure you're using wholesome words when you're speaking about and to other people. So if you didn't get a chance to, we're going to say now's the time to pause, get a Bible, grab your pencil, grab a piece of paper, somewhere you can write down all the great information we got coming for you today. So we're going to check through, uh, sorry, we'll start with our memory verse. And as you know, in July, we've been doing Ephesians 4.29. All right, today I'm going to read it from the NLT version. And it says, Do, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And last week, Minister Trinia came from the New King James Version. And for some people, that might make more sense. Some people, this NLT version might make more sense. So if you don't like one, just kind of read through and see what some other ones say. It might help you click in your brain a little easier. Definitely. But the reality is they all kind of get us to the same place. So to go with our memory verse, we always have our bottom line. So our bottom line, which has stayed the same, is speak words that build people up. So if we're looking back to our Ephesians 4.29, we're kind of taking the gist of it and just saying we want to speak words that build people up. And today we're going to talk about some ways that we can do that. So right now we're going to read from for you out of James chapter 3 verses 2 through 12. And we're going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. But if your Bible says something a little different, again, it's okay. It gives you the same message. So again, that's James chapter 3 verse 2 through 12. All right, and in my Bible, it has some sections uh, kind of chunked out for me because it helps me because even my Bible is a study Bible and, and it helps me uh, kind of keep my focus on what we're talking about. So this one, it says, it's not easy to control your talk. And that goes right along with what we've been talking about. It says, so James 3, 2 through 12 says, Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we can control our tongues, we will be perfect and can also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn whenever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. 
but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is the flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so bless, so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out the, with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. You can't draw fresh water from salt from a salty spring. Ooh. That was packed full of good information. So when we look at this, there's a couple things in there where it talks about leading a horse by a small bit or a small rudder making a ship, a huge ship turn, even though the winds are strong. Um, and I think that the, the preface is that the tongue, which is very small in our body, can be very, very powerful. And it says the tongue makes grand speeches. So this very small part of our body has a lot of power. And so because it has a lot of power, it's very important that we learn how to control that thing. Yeah. That, the part that stuck out, to, stuck out to me when he was reading through was about a tiny spark setting a great forest fire. Because you growing up, you always hear, be careful with fire and... Um, Smokey the Bear talking about only you can prevent forest fires. So something so little, a little spark from a little match can set the whole forest on fire. And that's pretty scary to think that our tongue has that same power that something so little can make something really great or really bad happen. And if we really think about that, there's probably been a time in each of our lives where... Um, you know, a really bad situation started with something very simple, like with something we said, mm-hmm. where um, you had a fight with somebody, uh, maybe a brother or sister, or, or even with your parents, and you may have said something, and just that that one statement might have been the thing that set it off, and it, and it made it all worse. So that one time you yelled, I hate you, or that one time you said, you're stupid, um, and that kind of starts a chain event of a chain of events that ends in, uh, you know, metaphorically, this gigantic fire that's ablaze. And now your life is kind of on fire because we didn't control something like our tongue. Absolutely. But to me, the good thing about that is just as easily as it can get out of control is how you can regain control. Because, mm-hmm. again, something's so little. So if you might have called someone a mean name or said something hurtful, all you have to do is say sorry. And a lot of times... That helps reel it all back in. So your tongue can also be used to help reel things back in. Something else James said that stuck out to me was about um, bitter and and fresh water flowing from the same spring, um, saying that you know on one hand the tongue will praise God, but on the other hand it will it'll speak ill of the people made in His image, which is us. That means that so quickly sometimes we will use our mouth or our words to praise God, to give him praise for all the things. And then on the very next hand, um, you know, say something bad about somebody who's our friend or family or even an enemy. And what James was saying is that we can't do that. You can't have both things flowing from your mouth. You can't praise God on one hand and also then tear down God's creations on the other. Um, And so it's not right and we have to do a better job. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. And if you go back to the end, I said, it's not easy to control your talk. It's something we have to actively work on. So we gave you, we have something for you today to help you with that. Because like we said, it's not easy. So today we're going to ask you guys to think Think before before you you speak. speak. All right. That's it. That's it. Think before you speak. It's that easy. It is that easy. We're going to say think before you speak. Now think means something for us today. So, Mr. Kim, you want to tell us what think means? Think. So, you spell think. T-H-I-N-K. And each of those letters has a meaning. So, if you're going to speak something, you should think about it first. And if it's not truthful, helpful, inspiring, necessary, or kind, then you don't need to say it. Oh, there's a lot of things in there. Mm-hmm. So, let's start with that first one, right? 
The first one was T, truthful. Truthful. So somewhere I looked and, uh, you know, there's a lot of information on the Bible and it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool that we start with truthful because we speak about the word of God as being the truth. And so we can use the truth to help us, you know, determine what we should be saying. So in Ephesians 4.25, it says, so stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. Hmm, we're all parts of the same body. So if we're all working together, then it's important that we're telling each other the truth. So we can't be telling lies. And so if you're going to think about something you're going to say, one place to good, well, one good place to start is, is it the truth? Is it a truth that we're getting ready to tell? Now, there is some other things there, because sometimes people will say, uh, well, the truth hurts, or they'll say, um, I, I wasn't wrong because what I said was true. And that's not the only reason that you have to say something. So that's why we have these other letters, because sometimes something might be true, but that thing might also be hurtful, and therefore it may not be necessary, or may not be helpful, or may not be inspired, or may not be kind. So it's not always as simple as saying, um, if it's true, then I should have to say it, because there's a couple things that go with that. It's not that easy. you got to think about all the aspects, so that's why we're asking you to think. So if you can't cross the T, then you shouldn't move on to H. If you can cross that T and you know it's something truthful, then you move on to H, helpful. And you think, is this something helpful before I say it? So helpful. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. That's Proverbs 12, 18. Healing, right? So some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. So cutting remarks, that sounds bad, right? And it is. Yeah. We've all maybe, uh, well, when I was younger, we called them cut downs, but that's where you would say something mean about somebody, a diss, a slide. I don't know what you guys say now. It's not important. It's when you say something mean. <laughs> um, but the, the words of the wise bring healing. So wise words oftentimes are helpful. So good. It's truthful. And also it brings some healing. It's helpful to the situation. I think it's also a good reminder that your words can do two things. They can cut someone and hurt them, or they can heal someone, and it's your choice which kind of words you're going to use. So if you determine that your words are truthful and helpful, then we move on to see if they are inspiring. And for inspiring, we're looking at Proverbs um, chapter 20, verse 15. It says, wise words are more valuable than much gold and many rubies. So some wise words can be very valuable to you in your life, right? So, and they can, words um, oftentimes inspire people. And we've had lots of leaders uh, in, our, in our history. Um, even the words of, like, let's say I'll just choose Martin Luther King Jr., he had inspiring words. Everybody's heard the I Have a Dream speech. And those inspiring words moved people to do something good. Uh, Jesus is a great example. Plenty of words of Jesus in the Bible where he inspired people to do something. Um, and so that's one way that we can think about, are, are my words that I'm going to say in the right direction? Are they good or are they bad? Right? Yeah, and I think even to our praise and worship songs, songs are a really good way that we use words to inspire people, and so it inspires me whenever I hear them to to be a better person. And when I hear them at the beginning of service, it inspires me to hear the word and to learn. So the next letter is N, so necessary. Is what I'm about to say necessary or not? All right, so for necessary, Proverbs 13, verses two through three says, <clears throat> Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. So those who control their tongue will have a long life. And I like I think of this verse made me think about control. And if you have good control over your tongue, you have the ability to determine is what I'm going to say necessary. Right? And if it's necessary, then it's a good thing. And if it's not necessary, then 
that means you don't need to say it. Um, and that control will lead to you having a long life. But opening your mouth can ruin everything. So if you open your mouth to say something that's not necessary, it could ruin everything. And it could go sideways. And there's often times um, where maybe you think of th- something that you that you want to say, and then you're like, I don't know if I should say that. Maybe this isn't the right time to say it. Um, and sometimes your conscience is kind of telling you that little voice in the back of your head, or, or maybe even it's the Holy Spirit or it's God saying, hey, like, it's not necessary to say that right now. And then I can speak for myself. Sometimes I say that thing anyway, and it makes everything worse. Right? Because it wasn't necessary to say it right then. Um, and I know with my wife, there's plenty of times where I probably could have said nothing and we would have had a better time. But I said something because I thought I was right or I wanted to be right. And even if I was right, it wasn't necessary and it made things worse. Now, something that could be necessary to say, even though you might be wondering, should I say it or not? If you have something in your teeth, you can tell <laughs> someone, hey, you got a little, but you don't want to scream it so that everybody in the whole room hears, but I could just say, hey, you got a little something. Because that could help them. You know, it's a little embarrassing to walk around like that. So you might wonder, should I say that or shouldn't I? That's something that is necessary because it can help. But if you are wondering, should I tell them that I think their shirt's ugly? <laughs> Not necessary. Not necessary. Because <laughs> they might like the shirt, so it's definitely, they. I don't even know if that's truthful. The shirt might, it might be ugly to you. It doesn't mean it's an ugly shirt. That's an opinion. Sorry. Sidetrack. All right, back to the story. Our last letter in think is K. I don't think we're going to cross off K at all. No. This one to me is really important because you should always try to be kind. So if you're thinking before you speak, you'll make sure that your words are kind. So for kind, we have Proverbs. Sorry. Just so excited. <laughs> All right. Um, Proverbs 16, verses 23-24, which says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. And so I, this is kind of cool because the kind words are not only um, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body of the person you say them to, they're also sweet to the soul and healthy for your own body. So when you say kind things... It's not just good for them, it's good for you too. Yeah, if you think back to a time when you might have said something unkind or you didn't think before you spoke, you probably felt a little bad later on. You're like, oh man, I really said that? That was not the right thing for me to say. And so it it doesn't feel good to say unkind words or untruthful words or unhelpful words or uninspiring words or unnecessary words. So all these things you should really be thinking about before you say anything. And I'm sure your mom and dad have told you a hundred times, think before you speak, but you really should. And hopefully what we went over today will help you to really focus in on that. And remember, you don't have to say anything quickly. There's a verse in James 1.19 that says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. That's slow to speak. You don't have to to react to everything that's said to you. You can respond, and by responding, that means you're slow to speak. You take time, and you think about your words. And don't ever let anybody rush you into saying something because you don't want to let your emotions drive you. So a lot of times, um, it's okay to take a second. Something I wanted to leave you guys with is from Luke 6, uh, 6, chapter 6, verse 45, which says, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. All right? So your words show the real you. Now, that can be kind of scary sometimes. And this is one of those things where I have to think about what I'm saying to you guys before I say it. Is it truthful? Yes, it's truthful. What you say is a reflection of what, you're ha- what you have in your heart at that moment. And so, you know, if you're saying evil and mean things, well, that's not, that's a reflection of, of evil and mean thoughts or maybe even some bad stuff going on. So we have to make a change there. Um... It's helpful for you guys to hear this. I hope it's inspiring you, inspiring for you. It's definitely necessary, and I hope that we said it in a kind way. But you want to make sure that the real you 
is reflecting, uh, reflective of that good person saying good things from a good place in their heart. And the best part is, like always, we have the word to guide us. And so we don't need to, to think we're stuck. You can change your heart. If you're looking at it and you're like, man, I say a lot of kind of mean things, you can change that. And there's no reason that you have to keep letting that salty water flow because we know there's room for fresh water in there. There's not room for both, but you can change that salty water into fresh water and start saying some great words and thinking before we speak. And you want to know how you get that change? And I know uh, you're like, oh man, I'm stuck on this, I don't know. The way we get to that, that, that good change, that's Jesus. That's where we let Jesus into our heart. And when we let Jesus into our heart, you can kick out all that bad stuff. I like to think about Jesus like a little karate Jesus. And like, oh, oh, oh. Let me shake your head now. Oh. All right, so Jesus gets in there and he can kick out the evil when we let the love of Christ, which we learn about and we say, you know, at our church, love like him. We're talking about Christ there. When we have Christ on the inside, then that's what will be what flows from our mouth. So you got to let Jesus in there. And next week, I don't know, maybe Minister Trinia will talk about karate Jesus or <laughs> some other kind of Jesus that she believes is in her heart. But she'll definitely be talking to you guys about how to continue using our words in positive ways and um, using them to inspire other people. So in closing, our words are powerful. We want you guys to think before you speak. Remember that. Use it because it's going to be important to you. If we can get everybody to bow our heads, we're going to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again, God, for continuing to give us the opportunity to meet. We know it's tough times. We know it's hard not always being face to face, but we know that it's important, God, that we continue to hear from you and learn about you. Reach out to our children, God. Get into their hearts. Let Jesus get into their hearts and work so that they can understand the power that their words have so that they can make positive changes in their lives, their family lives, their friends' lives, by the way that they speak, how they, you know, who they speak, how they speak to each other. And we're asking that they, they take these lessons that they've learned and they use them in their lives. We're asking that they think before they speak, that they say things that are truthful, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind. And that through doing that, God, they can continue to spread the love of Jesus Christ to their friends, their family, and to anybody that they meet. They continue to be a beacon for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys.